<laughs> you know in the beginning of YouTube videos where like somebody <laughs> 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 Weapon. Shout out. What if there were seven of me? Seven of me. Crime. That's what you missed on Glee. <laughs> Like, okay, why are you doxing my <laughs> my deviant art from when I was like 12? The verdict came out on the Trump hush money trial, and he has been found guilty. <laughs> okay. I love pop Best culture idea. and eyebrows and work. Okay, and then this can just sit here. We beat the prophecy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then you rip their face apart and eat their guts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are the world. <laughs> we are the world. Oh my god. Next round. <laughs> um, we're gonna jerky it. Ooh. Okay. It's a conveyor belt for your hands. I don't mean to interrupt you, my queen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> I got denied communion at a funeral mass. Oh. I would boil yeah, my brain. Nice. Oxygen takes its toll. Please help. Please. Please help me, Rachel. We need your help. No jokes allowed. Now let's eat these ladies' fingers. You said wash my brain? Like It's yeah. washed. It's clean. It's ready to go. <laughs> we're we're going to do a nice right. jerky, lay it out in the sun. There seems to be a B-side to this. <laughs> Closer together, we're, we're oh, Zach's gone. <laughs> we do a side by side. I don't know why you chose. Color. Look at him go. Look at these hands go. Show me Rachel. Show me what you want. Show me. Oh. Every seven years, your tongue just, 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 just disintegrates right in front of Well, Jarvis, what's your experience with laughter? Hate it. I love conveyor belts. You very, very, you don't really get to play with them very much. No, this is awesome. No, Doc, I swear, I already peed already. It just, like, keeps going missing. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking about how much it really changes the vibe when I'm wearing a conveyor <laughs> instead of a beret. Because before I was French, and now I'm just like a guy at work. <laughs> you know your taste buds actually fall off? Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> What's up, or whatever, construction worker. <laughs> Try Guys and Smosh for helping us put this on. Thank you to everybody in Adam. We already did every individual creator and our beautiful crew behind us who's done it. Please donate to the Tiltify um, while we're here. It's fun, it's cute, we're laughing, we're vibing, but we're here to raise money. So, like, if you could spare a dollar, a hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> we'll take it all. Yes, yeah, so. And if you can't donate, Interact, like, comment, and share with your friends, your uncle, your family, your neighbor, like your dog, you know, who knows? So, uh, I'm Steve Sosby. I founded PCRF over 30 years ago. Um, 
first started bringing injured kids from Palestine during the first intifada, brought the first injured child from Gaza back in 1991 to Los Angeles. He was a triple amputee, 10 year old boy and have um, been fortunate uh, to be able to serve Palestine in a way that's hopefully had a positive impact over the years. I've been able to get over 2000 kids out over the past 30 years and um, we've been able to get uh, do a lot in a very short period of time. Uh, we have 12 injured children in the US right now being treated. We just got two kids in yesterday. Um, from Gaza. Um, we're, we are building a field hospital in Rafa, uh, Egypt, uh, Han Yunus, excuse me, Rafa Han Yunus border um, that will be serving 2,000 patients a day. It's nearly finished. But we are doing a mental health program for traumatized patients and children on the ground in Gaza, group therapy and individual sessions, which we're running a kitchen, which is providing over 5,000 meals a day, roughly. And we're sending medical teams in when we're able to, uh, to provide treatment on the ground there. And we'll be doing more of that in the future providing shelter uh, for uh, people who are homeless or have been displaced, um, not homeless because their homes have been destroyed, uh, but have been displaced whenever able with the supplies being limited and challenged to get them in. And then we're running remote cl makeshift classrooms because uh, children obviously have been out of school since October. All of us individually is that we're responsible for what's happening. Whether we're Americans or whatever your nationality is, everybody in the world is responsible, especially the Americans. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. And therefore, we as Americans or as free men and women on this planet, walking on this planet, have a responsibility to stand to stand with those who are struggling for freedom and struggling for justice and equality and sovereignty and self-determination as the Palestinians are and as they have for generations. And it's our responsibility to heal the wounds that are being inflicted by our governments uh, on these children, on these people. And I and that doesn't mean that you you know you should wake up every morning and see these images of of children who've lost their limbs or these parents who are carrying uh, you know pieces of their children into hospitals uh, in complete anguish and despair and that you just feel there's no role for you to to do something positive. No, we can and we must stand with the Palestinian people today in an effective way, in a way that isn't just scrolling and liking. You get out in the streets, you let people hear your voice, you carry the flag with pride, and you do something positive to heal their wounds. The people in Gaza need to know they're not alone. That while the world has watched this genocide, which has killed over 1% of their children through bombings of their schools, of their mosques, of their churches, of their homes, of their refugee camps, they feel that the world considers them as subhuman. And what our job is not only to heal these children, but to show the people there that we love them, we care for them. We're going to heal them and we're going to stand by them during this historic moment of genocide in which we are now going to have to be accountable one day to our children and grandchildren who are going to ask us, what did you do in 2023 and 2024 when children were being killed every single day by your government? What did you do to stop it? What did you do to stand up and say enough? If you can heal one child, if you can heal 10 or 20 or 100 or 1,000, that's your responsibility and that's a great deed. So don't give up. Keep struggling. We're all in this together. Let's work as one unified collective body of Christians, Jews, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, atheists, whatever. We're here for justice and freedom. That's a universal value and universal cause. That's what the Palestinian cause is about. And we have to keep working. We can't give up. They've not given up. We don't give up. So let's keep yeah. working together and find ways to show the world and to show the people in Gaza we stand with them and we'll never abandon them.